Hello and welcome to a Taylor's Tales podcast. This is Chris's Corner. I'm your host, Chris Taylor, and welcome back to a brand new episode. This week, I'm talking about the greatest anime of all time. Now, recently, uh, I've been looking up one of my, like, favorite, not favorite YouTubers, but one of the, fa- the YouTubers that I saw recently put a really good video out. His name's uh, Joe the Anime Man. For those who are in the anime part of YouTube, come forth, come further, come in, settle down by the fire. We're going to spark it up a little bit because we're going to be putting out some serious debatable content for today. And one of the great things about Joe's latest video on anime was getting a hundred different YouTubers to uh, analyze their favorite you like not favorite th- what they considered the best anime of all time and this podcast is going to be solely on what i believe to be the greatest anime of all time based off um not only viewing that video if you haven't watched the video go forth it's an hour and a half long what i'm condensing down here is my opinion but also what i believe the anime in like overall anime industry's opinion but also the anime culture's opinion and being a little bit more logical what i found from that video was a lot of people were giving their opinion on not what the best anime was was what their favorite was and there's a huge difference there is a huge difference between what the actual best anime of all time is and what is your favorite and will be kind of a niche topic in terms of what you as a person will like. For instance, my first ever anime to watch period like ever was recommended by my best mate Ali uh, and he provided me with probably one of the best animes to ever start. It's one of the big three. It was Bleach. Bleach for me is probably my favorite anime to watch i can re-watch it over and over again and never get sick of it it's one of those series that is fun to watch it's got main character who's hilarious at times it's also a rough rugged ichio kurosaki um starting off uh, i watched the show when i was 15 so when i first watched anime i was 15 years old and it was crazy to see at that age the 15 year old character that was each going i've grown at the same pace and now when they're releasing releasing see each go releasing um in 2020 the late 2022 um the thousand year blood war is that they're going to be having each go at 27 and i'll be turning 27 in august so it's a lovely little comparison for me personally but the point being here is that bleach isn't the best anime of all time in my opinion uh, I think that a lot of people will agree with me is that it's a fantastic anime. It is really well done, but it's not perfect. It's not got that back to back. It's got a lot of filler in it. That's one point taken away. It's also got um, some of the arcs don't really bring the viewer in and sometimes it doesn't make sense sometimes it's a little bit complex it does remind me a little bit of kingdom hearts in the sense that there's a long storyline that you have to be at the beginning at to be able to get you can't just jump in halfway through and try and understand the series i don't think that's possible i think you do have little niches to be able to do that and yes there's a lot of anime out there that is hard to understand when you jump in the middle of it but there is series like Dragon Ball Z, for instance, that you can start uh, now in Dragon Ball Z Super and still get it. They understand what Goku's about. He's a very simple-minded character. and that's-, that's stupid. You're stupid. Stop being stupid. Or maybe I'm just being rhetorical. No, no, you're not. God, it's like you just use words you hear randomly to try and sound smarter. Huh. Well, now you're just acting transcendent. <laughs> Probably one of the best things about him is why he's so powerful is because he's so focused on being the strongest in the universe. And that's it. It's really easy. You've got Goku, Vegeta, and you just need to know that they're going to fight off any bad guy that's ever going to be around. And that's it. It's real simple and really easy to watch. And that's probably why it's the most popular anime of all time, Dragon Ball Z. uh, Because it's had that longevity of simplicity, but also it's got that ability to drag in everybody, all type of audiences. But majority of the time, it's those who are big on fighting. And it's got characters in there who have grown as the series have gone on. I would say that Vegeta would be the, the person who's grown the most. But we're not talking about the anime that has the longevity or the my my, my favorite anime we're talking about the best anime and the best anime and in, in, in i believe the anime community's opinion and in my opinion too will be of course 
Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Now, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is as perfect a anime series slash um, anime like movie, however long you're gonna watch it. <laughs> You know, it's not a movie, it's, it's the longest movie of all time if it was. Uh, it's a series, and it is as perfect as you're going to get with an anime. It's got characters that individually could have their own show. Individually, they could be focused on. Individually, they bring something to the table. Two of my favourite characters don't really have much lines to give. The wife of <laughs> of uh, Hal and, <laughs> and Thingy's... Oh my god, I'm forgetting names already. It's too early in the podcast to forget names. But um, Al and I want to say... El- oh my god, no. Give me a second. But the, the two main characters, teacher, husband, and <laughs> him and Armstrong are hilarious. And we're going to place the meme in in a minute and place it on screen and place it for the audio listeners. Is the un- united, like muscle off between the two of the two of them i've talked about this before it's probably one of my favorite memes of all time and in, in terms of anime is those two muscling off going, hoo, hoo, flexing in front of each other and then becoming immediate best friends i'll take care of this one sir Guess they've earned each other's respect. The muscles did the talking for them. That's just odd. It's like stuff like that. It's really silly stuff where they've got moments of humour, but it's also got one of the darkest underlying stories of all time. You start in probably one of the darkest scenes I've ever seen in an anime in terms of as a young adult, but also and now that I'm in my late 20s, I still look back at it and I'm like, oh my god, that is terrifying. So the two main characters lose their mother, they try to resurrect her using um, alchemy, and it goes wrong, and he... Oh my god. The full metal alchemist and Al, Al loses his, his whole body, basically. Um, and then... It's not going to come to me. I'm going to have to look it up. This is going to kill me. I can't believe I can't remember Ed... Oh, my God. Al and... So, full metal. This, this, ladies and gentlemen, is why you write down people's names before you do a podcast, for God's sake. Um, two brother... Full metal alchemist is... Oh, my God. Edward. Of course it is. People are probably screaming at me right now. How do you not remember the main character's name? I don't know. My memory sometimes hasn't latched on. Edward Elric, and then you've got Al for Al 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 Al, Al, Al Elric. I'm Alphonse. There you go. Alphonse Elric. Now, those two are brilliant. They have a fantastic combo of Alphonse being a little bit calmer and Edward being the the chaotic madman of a short man getting these fantastic short jokes every now and then in the bloopers alone for this series get an award because they're hilarious the dub of this series is just so good it's so well put together the story's really well paced and you're constantly on edge of by the end of it you don't even care whether the, the edward and al get their bodies back you're more concerned with the the story behind it and for those who haven't watched it i'm not going to spoil it for you because that's I, I just think you have to watch it i think it is the greatest anime of all time because anyone can watch it anyone can get into it if you haven't watched anime before and you want to get into anime you watch that series you start there because it's got humor it's got 
beautiful scenery, it's got different environments, you've got suspense in there, you've got horror in there, you've got battles in there, you've got magic in there, you've got um, hilarious, hilarious romance, I say hilarious romance because the chemistry between the, the men and the women who are potential partners uh, go go off like fireworks sometimes and other times it's like a, a, a wet dog, it just doesn't, it's just not happy. And I think the overall message behind the series is really positive, is that if you go after your goals and you continue and you do the right thing and if you're nice to people uh, down the road, even if you've got an overarching goal that is for you and you put other people's goals above yours initially, your end goal will initially be res resolved and you will get there in the end. You have to continuously like hack away at it and that's what Alphonse and Edward are doing in this series. They are chipping away at getting to their goal, but they have to do loads of little missions to be able to get there. And it's never filler. I never feel like I can watch an episode of uh, uh, Full Metal Alchemist and not feel like I'm gripped. I really believe, and the the music in the background is haunting. It every minute you're just sat there like, oh my god, this is heart rendering. I mean, when you lost. Man, it when you lose one of their closest friends, the Colonel Commander um, Hughes, and his daughter is at the funeral, say, crying to her mother, "Why are they burying Daddy? Daddy needs to go to work." It's, I mean, I'm not a tearful person, but that brings me to emotions because he didn't have any powers. He wasn't like an alchemist. He was just a military man. He was just trying to do the right thing for Alphonse and Edward. And he ended up dying. And it's brutal. It's absolutely brutal. All of the other characters uh, are breaking down because of he how good a person Hughes was. You know, it, it's... The Colonel even cries. And he's the flame alchemist he is like fire he is a representation of sternness and resolution and wanting to get to the top and yet you know it's bad when he is emotional and saying that it must be raining now when he's crying and it's not raining at all and the emotions in this show go all over the place it makes you realize that even though there is magic in this series it is so human, it is so real, it's so down to earth. Whoever wrote this series, congrats, you perfect, it's the nearest thing to perfection that there is in animation. There is no, the animation itself is brilliant as well. Like it's that perfect balance between nostalgia anime of the 90s with the early 2000s, uh, like realism in there and then it's also got not as new as some of the like the haikus and the and the hero academias and all of those it's not as you know advanced but it was a different time but if you watch it now it's still hold on it's still there and that is just like brilliant now on top of all of that the storyline is backed by Something that I've talked about before and I want to emphasize in this. For those who haven't watched anime before, sometimes there's little messages behind it. There's other ideas that the creators have come behind. I think one of the greatest ideas that this show ever came up with is the idea of God. Now, many religions, not one that I believe in. I'm Buddhist, as I've said many, many times, and so there is no God in my mind. But this is the closest thing for me to believe in God. What they portray in this show as God is the closest to what I think is the rea reality. There is a being, a being that is neither good or evil. It, it just exists. It holds the balance in its hand. It is horrific at times and will take everything from you all at once and it will not be you know remorseful for it in any way shape or form it just is it will take it took edward's leg for him his arm from him and al's whole body for him for trying to resurrect uh, another human being and that was it and they had the carcass of their dead mother be shown in front of them and put into a massive mush of human garbage in front of them that is 
God right there doing that to them. On the other hand, when in the end of the series, you meet him again and he takes away the bad guy and he shows no remorse for him either. There is no good, there is no evil for this being. He is a guardian of the door, the door to alchemy and life. He is a guardian of the death and life and the resurrection and he doesn't allow there to be an imbalance and one of the characters tries to become him and it shows that this uncontained power the unclosing eye yes that's right the unclosing eye almost like sauron from lord of the rings except no fire just a white eye with a pupil unblinking seeing all and it's very brings out some of the omni omnipotent 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 sort of things from christianity except there is no love there's no love there's no hate there is just it and this i i genuinely think they nailed it they nailed it if there is a god and if there is a bit a being like that there is literally like that there's no love there's no hate there's no balance there's there's no jesus or or god whatever all those nice little fairy tales it is just a being who keeps the balance whether it be good or evil and it's pretty horrific along the way and there is very little good behind it but it is just there and it thrives off the chaos that is the world and it thrives on the order that is the world it's it's if you haven't seen it um i'll play a little clip now just to give you a real sense of it uh, and to get that horror but also that understanding of order tell me why did you refuse to join me why god how did i disappoint you you, you were, were incapable of believing in yourself <laughs> you stole your power from others you rejected your human origins and chose to covet the power of what you call god you never grew beyond your days in the flask did you truly think you'd become superior to humans by removing your seven desires? Don't make me laugh. What's wrong with that? I only wanted to obtain perfection. I wanted this world's knowledge for my own. Why should I be punished for that? What's wrong with craving knowledge? What's wrong with seeking perfection? Well, speak. What are you anyway? Do you even have a name? Who the hell do you think you are? Who am I? One name you might have for me is the world. Or you might call me the universe. Or perhaps God. Or perhaps the truth. I am all, and I am one. So, of course, this also means that I am you. I am the truth of your despair. The inescapable price of your boastfulness. <laughs> Humans who would dare to play God must pay a steep price for their arrogance. That is truth. <laughs> and now, I will bestow upon you the despair you deserve. Don't do this to me. I can't. I can't go back. This despair is reserved for the boastful. Just tell me what I was supposed to do! You brought this outcome upon yourself. What I do wrong, what should I have done? <laughs> You simply must have seen the answer with your own eyes. And so now that you've seen that clip, you'll understand that real darkness, but also real light. And it is just what it is. So enough about that. I think the greatest anime of all time can be summed up by multiple things and i'm going to go over them quickly now before we get too bored and we forget about the other animations to talk about uh so it's funny it's got super cool powers let's not be around the bush the alchemy in this show is amazing uh lovable characters all of them like uh, colonel mustang hughes um edward and alfonso Al um winry is beautiful she's gorgeous like amazing goddess uh you've got 
the two, like I said earlier, the teacher, she's hilarious in how harsh she is on them. You've got the teacher's husband who's hilarious, who's hilarious in how muscly and big he is. You've got Armstrong and Armstrong's sister, who's the commander of the Winter Fortress as well. And she's brilliant in how strong and independent and uh, harsh she is on everyone around her, but how she commands respect from all of her subordinates. I love all the creepy bad guys in it of how they are like so blind to the rest of the world and their like sort of greed and want and need and all of the um i haven't even talked about the fact that they perfectly represent the sins of man in like a form it's brilliant it's brilliant uh great music extremely dark storyline and the most realistic version of god and i've said all of those things and if you haven't watched it please go watch it if you're not an anime fan start there the full metal alchemist so that's the greatest anime of all time but here's the thing i do think that one thing that's missing from the anime community to really emphasize is a lot of the time they talk about series they talk about series tv series that are all animated and yes there's depth in those there really is but if you want to gain a big audience you want to gain something that's greater than everything that you're thinking of outside of the anime community you want to grab people in there is one or two studios and you already know what i'm about to bring in the big guns when i say that bring out outside of the anime community it's studio ghibli and it's makoto shinkai of course and hasada to some extent but i'm not going to go too much into detail because he's brought in some but not as big as those two and for me, the two movies that represent Studio Ghibli so well, there's My Neighbor Totoro, which is bringing in the huge amount of kids at a young age into the animation industry. You've got The Wind Rises, and then you've also got Princess Mononoke for me. The two for me, personally, Princess Mononoke, I think would be agreed on by the entire anime community as one of the greatest animated, like, films of all time and is probably gonna be you know when i say full metal alchemist i think of studio ghibli as well on that level as well it's near perfect and princess mononoke and the wind rises come to me at two ends as a juxtaposition the wind rises is Miyazaki at the other end of his career still just as sharp just as good but in a different light you've then got Princess Mononoke when he's at the peak of his powers and he has uh, an anime studio that is running at full throttle and I believe in my mind that Miyazaki utilizes nature in one of these films and then utilizes humanity in the other the wind rises is humanity it's war it's the machine it's mankind evolving in princess mononoke it's beautiful nature and how we destroy it and how we need to revert back into it and both are linked in two different ways there's a love of human and nature in princess mononoke and then you've got the pr love of of man and woman in the wind rises but it's also a love of man and machine and these are the contrasting juxtapositions of film but they're also what i would consider two of the best films he's ever produced because they have such depth they have a greater audience in my opinion it's not just for people who want to watch anime it is also for those who feel that they never watched anime before but they would be able to sit down watch the film and still enjoy it like a normal film i believe the greater audience wouldn't be put off by the animation style either for either films i believe that the newer uh studio ghibli version of wind rises represents the the post ponyo animation which is very much a style in its own and princess mononoke is the pre ponyo series where it's got a very 90s look to it reminds me and we're going to talk about the granddaddy of uh, animation here, is Akira. Akira has that very gritty uh, 80s, 90s vibe to it in the sense of it's, you know, the 
sort of cyberpunk look to it but it's also got that animation style that is still seen in the 1997 of princess mononoke and even though there's 10 years apart between the two of them so for me i believe that those two can still be considered on a similar level to full metal alchemist but they're different because they're not a series they're not as in-depth they are film length so you can get through them quite quickly and they're there for you to consume and they're for a wider audience and i think these are, this is what makes a really good anime it's not just for a niche group that is the one thing that i've found with the opinions on that video i talked about at the beginning of the podcast is that these people were giving their favorite animes but they were so niche they weren't going to bring in a wider audience they weren't going to bring in people who aren't into anime you've got to consider those who have never watched anime before coming in if you want to bring the wider audience in you've got to make the best anime of all time for instance i want to bring in just a quick example wolf children one of my favorites one of my personal favorites but i know for a fact it's not going to be uh, everyone's cup of tea because it's quite emotional quite a lovey-dovey film but it's also uh, a, a beautiful story and for for instance i showed it to to my family to my parents back in 2000 and i want to say 18 and they loved it they lapped it up it's one of those films that you can show people and if they're into a love story it still conveys it it's still there if they like a love story it's there for them so if you like a romantic film then you're going to love watching wolf children because it's a, a depiction of family but it's also a depiction of a magical family and so this is what i'm talking about that ability to sell it to a new audience makes it that just greater it levels it up and that's why you can't say for instance like a sports anime like haiku it's great but it really only works within the anime community my hero academia it, it's great it only works really within the anime community it's not attack on titan as much as i love it and it's fantastic but it's so outrageous that it only works in the anime community and i wouldn't recommend it as the first thing to watch in an anime what i would recommend is one of the honorable mentions i'll mention later uh but i'm gonna finish off this thought first the wind rises princess mononoke fantastic well done films that you you watch and you relate to the characters and you relate to the story and the pacing of the film as I, I think pacing is really important as well if you can sit through the entire thing without thinking about going on instagram going on social media or doing something else or watching a youtube video or watching or looking at something else while the film's on you know it's a good film you know it's an attention grabber it's it's there it's really intriguing the stuff continuously going the plot is being developed the characters are being developed the side characters are interesting it's not just the main character and then a bunch of nobodies that's the fun thing about these films is that they as i've said with full metal alchemist they're there they're present and they're developed so makoto shinkai makoto shinkai i discovered back in 2013 i think i was quite early on to the game because when i first watched it uh his work was garden of words 40 minute short film i consider to be some of his best work would i suggest it to everybody to watch who isn't an animation fan no because it's quite a it's a representation of a toxic relationship but also uh youth coming of age and understanding the world around you and how it it doesn't have any rules and then you've also got your name which is for a wider audience and i would recommend to people who've never watched anime before and is also probably one of the best anime of all time it's a, a beautiful time traveling love story as well and it's about two young high schoolers from two completely different backgrounds one from the countryside one from the city and this beautiful contrast as well again i think it really works well when you've got two different people very different personalities to provide a little bit of uh, salt and sugar to the movie if you know what i mean and i think that your name being made in 2016 uh, released in 2016 uh it completely changed the game in the sense of you wanting to jump into the animation you want to jump into the film that's how beautiful it is that's how real it is it was so 
you can when you look at shinjuku when you look at tokyo how it's being depicted into the film it's like you want to dip into those you know those paintings where the water's so clear and so beautiful you just want to put your hand in it and you just go dip you dip into the screen that's what makoto shinkai work is it's so beautiful so real you feel like you want to jump in it's like those shorts of watching uh studio ghibli food being chopped up you're just like dear god where's the food give it to me now like that's you know i'll, I'll play the clips now All of these being played as I'm talking about it, just bang, 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 bang. They should represent to you a true representation of beauty in the world. And through Makoto Shinkai's eyes, we are seeing something that we've never seen before. Pure ad adoration for the world. And that is really important there because it's so key to his films. It's like if you look at nature, if you look at even the city, if you look at human beings, everything's beautiful. Everything's like a light being pushed down even the water even the rain coming down from the sky has some sort of you know almost godlike power coming down from the skies now these films i think are the new studio ghibli they are that life-changing that beautiful that emotional that bringing something out from a human being that you really can connect with that's what I'm talking about, really pushing the boundaries in terms of animation and not just making it about, it, it goes beyond anime, that's what I'm saying, it's going beyond, it's not just an anime film, it's a film that just happens to be animated and that, that's true power in animation. So, those eclipsed into films, those are the greatest films of all time I believe for anime. I think the greatest animated films of all time and the greatest series of all time just happens to be Full Metal Alchemist and encircles all of them. Now, I want to do a few honourable mentions. Like I said, Bleach, Dragon Ball Z, they have some of the best battles, some of the best long, you know, keeping that longevity, that like amazing ability to evolve as a series goes towards Dragon Ball Z. You cannot credit that more. The amazing power-ups, the awesome characters, the amazing abridged series. If you haven't watched that, Dragon Ball Z abridged is hilarious. Uh, it actually makes the show much more fun to watch when you see it being abridged and having some of the, the most hilarious uh, sort of well-written comedy that's placed over an anime. Uh, it's on YouTube. You can watch it like the 
series has been out for years and it's been completed and so you can watch it from, from beginning to end uh, and I think that they did an absolutely killer job I was watching that when I was in sixth form maybe even earlier that when I was in when I was like 14 years old I was quoting it, it, what does a scarer say it's over 9000 Vegeta what does a scouter say about his power level it's over 9,000! And that's the original, but also the way they say it in the abridged is just as brilliant. And the way the Vegeta... <laughs> I can't even do... Nappa's voice is hilarious in the abridged view. I think I spot a Pokemon! Vegeta, look! More bald people. The small one, the two tall ones, and... Uh, uh, Vegeta, look! A Pokemon! You hear that, Vegeta? It's a Chiaotzu. I'm gonna what? catch it. I told you I'm not a Poke- Ow! Oh, it didn't work, Vegeta. <laughs> like, it's just so dumb. And I'm gonna play some of these clips, just for you, so you understand, because otherwise I'm just making stupid references for no one's gonna be able to get any context out of. But Dragon Ball Z Abridged, I've got, I, I do, you know, sort of love that. It will always stand in my heart. Like you, you Abridged. It's, it's just brilliant. And so, honourable mentions, let's let's go through, so we've talked about Dragon Ball Z has the longevity, the coolest power-ups, the battles have the intensity, uh, the abridged version is amazing, Bleach, it's just a personal vote, yep, I'm glad I said that, and then Makoto Shinkai, music alone in both films makes it god mode, totally agree, display of toxic relationships and good relationships we've all been in that stage in life where we have no idea what we're meant to do and what we want to do and that's sorry i forgot to mention that but like that's placed within both films in both garden of words and in your name this representation of at a young age you don't know where you're going in life and you just are hoping that somewhere you're going to find that that notion of what you're going to do and that's never clear by the way that's never doesn't matter how old you get you never are sure that you're doing the right path you're going down the right thing you just have to meander your way through and just sort of enjoy the ride because there's no way you you don't get on a certain track knowing that you know the end you get on it with the possibility that it could be a good end or it could be a shit end and you're just going for the best you can possibly get uh, and I think that is exactly what you're you're doing in anime as well you're going along for the ride and you're going along for sometimes a really good ride in this case the best at ride of all time uh, and you hope that it turns out okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, the animation makes you want to jump into the screen. I want to go to that park and... <laughs> yes. So, in Garden of Words and in uh, Your Name, there is displays of Tokyo and Kyoto, and there's beautiful depictions of the real-life versions of, of some parks. And I want to go to these because of these films. That's how good the depiction is of them. And I think... Watch it and you'll understand exactly what I mean because there's a level of detail to there that you can only really get if you see it in real life. And I can't wait. Now, honourable mentions, ladies and gentlemen. Those who are punching at the screen saying, God damn it, Chris, why have you not spoken about One Punch Man? I, det I detest you now, sir. And I understand One Punch Man is absolutely epic, but it's not perfect. It's not at that top. Like, it is a series that I would consider uh, able to bring in a wider audience, for instance. However, One Punch Man had an amazing season one, but it kind of lost it a little bit in season two. And it just lost, it lost its edge. I don't know what it is, but I felt like I wasn't given that, like, final boss sort of fight in the final see in the second season i'm hoping they redeem themselves in season three really hoping for it but they set themselves up so high in season one that it just kind of trickled down a little bit from like that 10 to to an eight and i i feel a lot of people will agree with me on that one i think that if they watch both series they'll or seasons they'll understand that there is a little bit of trail off and that season one had such an epic final episode of just a boss playing against Saitama that it just felt kind of like eh well you know season two nice but 
let's move on. So, but One Punch Man also has one of the best uh, intro soundtracks of all time, and I love that. And that was also why I was annoyed with season two is that they didn't include that when they start the bloody show, and that really ticked me off. I was like, you have a perfect song, don't change it. I understand that you like changing the intro. It's just change the outro. We've got a perfect intro right now. Stick, stick with it. Stick with it. You're good. You're good. Um, haiku again, niche. Love it. Uh, fantastic sports anime. You know, sports animes are underrated. They're they're amazing. Some of them like uh, Kuroko's Basketball Haiku. Um, I think who, what was I watching recently? Ace of Diamonds. Love that. That's a really long series, but it's really worth watching. Uh, I think there was also one more as well that I'm forgetting. It was about football this time, uh, and it was really good. To, good watch. Oh, Days. It's called Days. Just literally the word Days, um, and it's really worth a watch as well. I really enjoyed it and how the character evolved. But sports anime is sports anime and it can't really be considered the greatest of all time because it's too niche and there isn't really that level of quality that comes from the greatest anime of all time such as Full Metal Alchemist which brings in the whole package. Season 1 of Sword Art Online, I totally agree with that. I saw that being mentioned in a couple of anime videos is that it is a, re a perfect first season. It is really solid. Like It's one of those where it brings you into a new world where you're excited about the world. You're like, wow, this is brilliant. This is such a fun concept. And then you get to season two and you're like, oh, Jesus fucking Christ, why have you done this? This is awful. What have you, you, you had a beautiful concept. Why have you ruined it? Like, Just stick with what you were going to do. Ah. And then it just goes... <laughs> crash. Everything's going to shit. So... Sword Art Online Season 1, brilliant. Give it a watch if you're into that meta idea of what we'd all be like if there was a metaverse and we were going to be living inside of it uh, and you want to be able to live in a fantasy world. That is exactly what it is. And it's actually a really good depiction of what would happen if we all got stuck in there and, you know, we couldn't get out. So that's an interesting concept. They fucked it up, though, after Season 1. So sad, but it's true. Attack on Titan, I talked about, it is as close as I can get to saying, like, damn, you're so, you're brilliant, but if I'd known that you would be just, you'd be this amazing in season four and five, that maybe you could have, you know, season two, put some a little bit more effort in, maybe. Like, I felt like season one was great, and then it trailed between season two and three. I was like, where's this going? Is it... I lost sort of interest, and then I got to season four and five. I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. So if they could extend that, oh my god, this is amazing, between the season two and three, and have created a consistent, oh my god, then this would have been brilliant. But they didn't, and that is the disappointing part, is the beginning. Uh, and that, for me, is kind of like, you know, it doesn't put it up there as the perfect anime. Uh, it's good, it's great, it's up there as one of the best of all time, but it's not perfect. Uh, so, all of those honorable mentions. I'm missing out loads. People are probably crying at me. Christy, you've not mentioned Naruto, what, One Piece, um, all of the big three. You know, they're, they're great, don't get me wrong, they're amazing. But they're not, like, they're not perfect. It's like with Bleach, it's like a personal preference. Yes, it's one of the big three. Yes, it's really good, but there's one that's better. And you have to consider that, and you... you even if you have a personal preference for certain series, there's loads of amazing anime series out there. Like, I love watching new anime and watching new things that I've never seen. I've not even seen Berserk yet. That's how not deep I am into the anime series. Like, it's crazy. I've watched Cowboy Bebop. I've watched all of the big ones. Like, they're, they're, they're great. They're brilliant. But do they keep you going? Cowboy Bebop, for me, I got, you know, bored after a while and stopped watching. That means it hasn't kept my attention. It's already lost me at the first hurdle. You've got to keep that consistency. You've got to keep the, the viewer going in. And there's so many of these anime out there that I'm like, I've watched three episodes and now I cannot watch anymore. This has ruined me. And then there's others um, such as, and give me a second to remind myself, it's, uh, it's to do with time travel. It's about a kid who investigates the murders of these younger kids by, by a murderer that has killed his mother and he flashes back um and i can picture it in my head and it's like <clears throat> it's to do with time 
That's going to kill me. It matters not. In post credits editing, Chris, we're putting a clip of the show right now with the name of it in there. Now, go, 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 go. Kayo Hinazuki. That night at the park was the last time I saw Kayo. And now for our next story. Uh, and now that that is in there, I will now end the podcast by saying Full Metal Al- Alchemist is the greatest anime of all time. And I will say big honorable mentions to the greatest films of all time being Studio Ghibli's Wind Rises and Princess Mononoke, followed by Your Name and Garden of Words, Makoto Shinkai's. So, I hope you've enjoyed this summation, this uh, real critical analysis of the greatest anime of all time. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you maybe, if you even if you're not an anime fan, you're thinking, oh, maybe I'll maybe I'll have a look, have a look, see, see if see if it attracts me or not. If not, and I've put you off for life, I'm sorry. I've shot one, another one in the foot, and that's that's my fault. <laughs> but if not, and you still want to hear more details, you want to see more things, and consider me going into a few more series, continue to follow me through this adventure of these podcasts. So, this has been a Tell Us Tales podcast. This has been Chris's Corner. I've been your host, Chris Taylor. And as always, I hope to see you this time next week. Bye now.